All right. I'm going to spend a white in order to play a pride guardian. Yep. See that? I okay. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad we've resolved. See. <laughs> And with that, I will end. Jesus Christ, what is my next card? Oh my God. Uh, I'm going to pay two to cast my Child of Night. All right. He's got lifelink. Yes, she does. Because she loves the darkness. It is so sweet tasting. I can't attack you. And I'm going to end my turn. Okay. Mm. Oh, that's an interesting card. Alright, so one, two, three, four. One, and I'm cast two. A Throne of Empires. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, no. Mm -hmm. All right, nah. and then I'm going to pay one and tap my Throne of Empires to generate a 1-1 one, one soldier. 1-1 one, one soldier. And uh, I will end. Okay, good, good. Keep keep, keep ending your turn. That's, that's good. I mean, we might actually go to round three at this rate. Oh, gosh and golly. Um... That is a uh, yeah. That that's that's a real that's a real interesting card. I'm gonna. <laughs> All right. What was Pride Guardian? So if Pride Guardian blocks. You gain three life. If Child of Night hits you, I gain yep. two life. Well, hits anything rather. I'm gonna pay four. Pay four for my Diabolic Tutor. Diabolic Tutor is gonna get a thing. I'm gonna put right. that thing in my hand. Um, and that thing uh, is going to be... To Diabolic, uh, what right is your response I'm to Diabolic Tutor? Dinner. How dare you? <laughs> tap the Crown of Empires in order to tap Child of Night. Okay. All right. Child of Night is now tapped. Um, allow me to exit my look at deck screen before I actually uh, resolve that little ish. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put... Is that really the right... Yeah, yeah, yes, it is. Yes, it is the right move. Okay. I'm going to put that card in my hand. Um... Tidewalk Tutor is now finished. Child of Night is tapped. Uh, I can't really attack you with consequence, so I have to end my turn. Alright. Okay. Um, I'm going to put down a mountain, and I'm going to swing at you with my uh, on one soldier. And I am going to block with my skeleton. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. They are both destroyed. They are both destroyed, and now that the skeleton's in the graveyard, I get to pay two and put them back on the battlefield tapped. Mm -hmm. Allowing me to pay one in order to regenerate my soldier. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I have wasted everyone's time. Nothing slows game down like dual negation. No, I negate you. No, I negate uh, I, you. <laughs> you are the one I, who is nullified. All right. Here's a, here's a play I was curious to see if I could actually pull off. I'm going to put a swamp down and pay seven. For Soren's Vengeance. <laughs> okay. Deal ten damage um, to target right, player. I'll take ten damage. And I gain ten life. It's a full-on switcheroo. Okay, next, start of combat. I am going to swing at you for three. Um, at the start of your combat, I'm uh, going to pay three. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And tap my Crown of Empires mm -hmm. in order to tap your Child of Night. Hoo-hoo, okay. That was, that was my fault for forgetting you could do that, so now you get to block with your Pride Guardian and gain three life. Or destroy yep. the skeleton. Or I'll destroy the skeleton. That's right, okay. No, no, no. Oh, uh, three, not four. <laughs> okay, it's a it's a ten point game. Let's let's keep the good times rolling. Vengeancing. Right, <laughs> um, two, three, four, five. Don't do it. Six. Don't do. It. Why would you run more than one? <laughs> God damn it! Uh, I've, I, am, I am I am just I am just tired of looking at this guy. 
It was hard enough for me to get rid of the first one. Alright, and then I'm going to pay one to equip him with... Uh, no! With ah! <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to swing at you with him uh, to deal... F uh, and then I'm going to pay two, um, other way, in order to deal one damage to Channel of Night. Yep. Oh my god, this is so aggravating. Are you only attacking with him? Yes, I'm only attacking with him. All right, all right. The fucking dragons. All right. So this this is uh, this is another last turn because you can use his ability to just auto kill me because this guy <laughs> fucking blows like that. Oh come on! Why didn't I put haste in this deck? God damn it! Ah! I <laughs> I I lose because on, you you, you got you got me you got me by the balls with that fucking dragon play that that saved your ass because I'm sure you're running fucking two or four of them. Put down the royal assassin. I'm equip not four of anything. Equip right? the you skeleton. Equip the skeleton change. with the world slayer and then just fucking swing. I I I lose. Block it. I'll block with pride guarding, gaining three. Life. And gain gain three life to make it a nine point game. Okay, now just just end it <laughs> because I've I've had enough this game. <laughs> Oh, I was hoping to actually get my scepter of empires. Oh well. Just end it. Eight damage to me directly. Actually, no, nine damage to me directly. Okay, so nine. I'm down to two, and then I take two from the flyer that I can't block. So that is the game. Good game, Cloud. Good game, Gerda. So, um, we actually did manage to explore three, almost three full colors and a bunch of the artifacts in, uh, in this set. Yeah, well, it's a good thing you ran two. and get that extra one in there. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm running two Flame Blast Dragons. Mind you, this, uh, mind you, this deck is more, is more or less, uh, uh, is more or less con a themed around the Gideon species that are here. I've got double Gideon's Lawbreaker and double Gideon's Avenger. And, yeah, so uh, you can, so you can lock up, so you can lock up your opponent while you so. deal direct damage. That's, that's basically the strategy I saw because you, you can you use Flame, Bra uh, Flame Blast Dragon won both of those games for you. I'm sorry, we keep talking over each other. <laughs> We do, but you know that—that's because I'm an idiot. Anyway, I wanted to pull off a, par a particularly nasty combo with Flame Blast Dragon, which is why I thought he had an ETB ability. I'm running Warstorm Surge, and I'm also running Circle of Flame. Mm-hmm. Come on, there. So you see, the game plan was to cast War uh, Warstorm Surge with Quicksilver Amulet on the field, and then I could, you know, Quicksilver Amulet out a Flame uh, Flame Blast Dragon and have Warstorm Surge just uh, just uh, blow up an uh, anything that you had on the field. And since a lot of the creatures in here are like one or two toughness, Circle of Flame, you know, protects me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well then, the, cir the, cir got, the circle uh, of fire protects. Uh, a couple other interesting things well, in here. I mean, actually, it's supposed to trap the princess. Off. Who are you keeping hostage in the tower? <laughs> oh yeah, Angelic yeah. Destiny is an amazing card. Please. See, I also have a bloodthirst card. Yeah, yeah, you do. What, what is a bloodthirst? Bloodthirst too, right? So he would be a five-five if with the bloodthirst. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. Timely reinforcements is a card that I was really hoping to actually cast on you, and there were plenty of opportunities, but I never do the damn thing. Right. So let's see here. Uh, mistakes were made during that last game. I think the move. Instead, because I got Soren's Vengeance with the Diabolic Tutor, I mean, it may, it turned it from a 13-point game into a 9-point game at the end, when you look at it. I really should have grabbed some more... Re you the game, dude. I really should have grabbed more removal with that. I, sh I should have figured you were going to come out with another creature that was going to kill me. 
But, you know, there's the problem with Swift, uh, Swiftfoot boots giving me hexproof as well. Well, but see, you don't have the timing if I have an instant card. True. true. I, or at least but I don't. I don't. Have, I don't, I don't think. Well, I don't that's think right, you yeah, have, I have it to pass because priority I have to you for. Uh, yeah, I have to pass priority to you because equip is a sorcery. And because you it's just casted speed. a card, or because I mean, if it's on the yeah. The 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 the, the point is that I'm you have you definitely have the superior deck. Your your deck it, it had a it had a strategy that was flexible that allowed you to you know really control the game regardless of what your opponent was running because a lot of these effects are just you know target creature or or deal direct damage to your opponent and it worked it sure did and my deck was all about wiping the field with world slayer and then ending the game with a 1-1 because there's a good chance my opponent can't retaliate and which is also the reason why i ran mono black is so that all you need to do is draw a swamp and a one drop and i might have a chance of winning the game in about 15 turns <laughs> Um, oh, why didn't you uh, spec into a bit of blue? I'm pretty sure there's some unblockable stuff in blue. No, there is. The problem is that if, um... All right, World Slayer kills the equipped creature too, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It kills It kills everything except for itself. Which is why you must look in the... So what you need to do is find a, is find a cheapo creature that's indestructible. There there are no... I, I, I tried... I, this this set does not really like the World Slayer. I'm not sure why they included some. They if they included any cards whatsoever that had indestructible, that would have been good. Not even Sarah Angel is good because when Sarah Angel leaves the battlefield, it removes its protection from whatever card it was protecting, so they both get destroyed at the same time. Um. Actually, I'm pretty sure Sarah's Angel's protection would actually protect the critter in that case. Hmm. Well, I mean, in, in any case, that that was it. Sarah Angel was the only ability in this entire set that conferred indestructible. And because World Slayer specifically says destroy... And I think, and I think you're referring to Aegis Angel, not, they, uh, not Sarah Angel. Sorry, Sarah sorry, Aegis, Aegis Angel, because Aegis is protection. Oblivion says so. But that's a that that is a you know that's a late game strategy. I would have the world so I would waste a turn putting the angel out in order to protect the thing, and then I still have to wait a turn to equip five the world slayer probably on a creature that has unblockable or flying. Yeah. And then there's also there's also the problem of the next time that you swing with world slayer, assuming that you don't kill me with that one, with that one hit, then he's gonna die. Then he's gonna uh, trigger again. Right, but in any in any yeah. case, it just it just so happens that Gerdat had the strategy ready to take on a player who was mostly bent on shenanigans. Oh yeah, let me let me pull out this stinker right here. I want to like find the nearest copy of this freaking card and rip it in half because of how fucking late I drew it. This fucking guy is supposed to be good. Yeah. The Royal Assassin is a pain in the ass. The problem is, by the time he actually came out in both of those games, I could not survive one more hit. And he had summoning sickness, so he sucks balls. <laughs> right. Uh, actually, I think Royal Assassin is one, of, is one of the better cards in your deck. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to show off in your deck? No, nah, it's just it's just a bunch of tech around getting the World Slayer out. Diabolic Tutor. I did put Sauron Markov in here just because, so I would at least have him in case I actually did get him, but I didn't because of my luck. But yeah. Oh wait, is Sauron is Sauron Markov even in this deck? Oh shit. Okay, okay I, I misspoke. Sauron Markov actually is not in this deck, but he would have been my one and only Planeswalker, and he's he's pretty he's pretty stupid. <laughs> I'm not running. You know, I'm not running uh, the uh, plane. The planeswalkers of this one. I think Garuk is uh, Garuk is the one for this one because uh, Magic 2012 was the bridge between um, whatever set uh, came before Innistrad and Innistrad. I think it was Zendikar. Right. Yeah, and this and this is a this is effectively when I started playing Mag uh, a Magic on Cockatrice. So I'm glad that you decided to come uh, come back to. Uh, to this and and he did pick this out because he wanted to use world slayer and he got to cast it but i didn't let him kill me with it because
because I'm an asshole. Well, the, the, and that's and that's you know that's an important lesson is you should never let the player with the world slayer out because it will dramatically alter the results of the game if that effect if that ability goes off it destroys lands destroys creatures enchantments and it resets the game and it forces you to rely on your top deck in order to get land cards. Suddenly you're worried about land cards during a late game situation. Yep, yep. Oh, All right, yeah. this has been us exploring ma uh, the Magic 2012 core set. Tune in next time for us exploring a different set, and it's my turn to pick. Woot. Yay. I have ideas, Cloud. Mwaha. Not every idea is a good one. <laughs> Not every thought Indeed. is sound. Be safe, everybody. I will rot your brains.